As we approach the end of 2022, it only seems like two minutes ago since it started, I've covered many applications on FreeBSD for the desktop. Some known, some less known. And here is a list of my top 10 either favorite, most used, or most requested applications for the desktop of FreeBSD to wrap the year up. With no particular order or favoritism, just 10 of the best. Number one, LibreOffice. Now, it goes without saying that LibreOffice is a very versatile, free um, office suite. And it's something which could easily replace Microsoft Office. I mean, it's very compatible. It can save and load uh, MS Office documents, etc. And you can use it for office work, just general uh, housekeeping, like uh, collecting recipes, etc. Here's the version. And... To me, it's invaluable because I write my scripts when, whenever I do scripts or videos. Sometimes I just, uh, like I'm doing now, I, I sit on the cuff. But when I do videos with scripts, I use LibreOffice. And if doing the finances for the household, etc., I use the spreadsheets. And here's an example. It's nothing in particular. And it's an extremely versatile Office suite. Uh, there are other options that you can use, which range from uh, obviously the documents and finance to presentation, drawing, formula, database, HTML documents, XML, labels, business cards, master documents, and templates. It's very comprehensive and very well laid out. In an old-fashioned style office way, none, none of this ribbon stuff or anything like that, if you don't like it, it's an excellent suite. Number two, Firefox. Well, it goes without saying that Firefox is an invaluable tool for open source uh, operating systems, either Linux or FreeBSD, and in particular FreeBSD, as really we don't get access to the Google Chrome, unless you, do, you, you use Wine or you use the Linux ABIs. But as a native product, Firefox is fantastic. It's updated, it's got all the features that you would request, and if you do a lot of your work online or your living online, etc., then, you know, without this, we'd be pretty much uh, without a paddle. Or tools, if you're a web developer, it's an invaluable tool. Like LibreOffice, it's something which you would miss if you didn't have access. Although, perhaps with LibreOffice, you could get by without that by using the online tools or online office available uh, by your browser. You can get extensions uh, to... Increase your productivity. There's themes if you want to make it look nice. There's plugins, dictionaries, which is very valuable. Uh, which also it helps. You know, it 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 can correct your documents if you're typing away and you don't want to spell things wrong or spell things incorrect. I said that wrong. Next one is Caden Live. Now Caden Live is something which I use. All the time, I do all the videos on it. It's very indispensable to me. Although I could perhaps use Shotcut. But Caden Live has all the features that I, I really like. It's easy to use. And it's kept up to date, like the other two. And it's something which I really would struggle if it was to disappear. Which uh, I don't think it will anytime soon. It's not dependent on System D or tied into System D like... Uh, many applications in the norm world are and it's uh, it, it's to be lauded for that it's its own thing and even though we really don't get uh, hardware acceleration really on FreeBSD it still works very well Audacity now Audacity again like Caden Live is something which I really couldn't manage without it's as you all know I don't need to introduce it it's an audio editor it's got VST plugins. It's got all the things that you would require. And it's I record into it, I edit it, export, job done. Apply my various macros, etc., to make my wonderful golden voice. And although there are perhaps less sophisticated alternatives, um, I think it's 
practically, and I could be wrong on this, it's practically the, the de facto audio editor recorder for Linux and FreeBSD. It's not something that could easily be replaced. Like, say, for instance, Firefox could be replaced by Chrome, if you wish. But with Audacity, I think it's the number one. Yes, you can get perhaps uh, some Adobe software running via Wine, some older versions, but that wouldn't be ideal. This, this is a fantastic native application for FreeBSD. And it's got a huge amount of options, many of which I really I don't use. But for what it does, for what I need it, you can't ask for better. Number five, Inkscape. Now, vector drawing applications are extremely useful. You can zoom into objects and they don't lose the shape or anything like that. Whereas, say, for instance, using pixel-based, it'll you get jagged edges, etc. I don't need to explain vector drawing. But with Inkscape, what you have is a wonderful vector drawing application, but also a brilliant design tool. So I use all uh, Inkscape for all my logos and text and screens. You can use it to create templates so you get a uniform look across all, all the various different things. And it's it's so easy to use. I mean, it's it's got great text tools. And again, like Audacity, I don't use it perhaps to its full capacity. There's many, many points which I need to learn. For what I use it for, which is specifically designing screens and logos and, and thumbnails, etc., it's perfect. Again, like the others, it's kept up to date. So any kind of new features that come in, it's quickly, by the, 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 the wonderful uh, FreeBSD port maintainers, it's transferred across, we get the latest tools as well. It's absolutely brilliant. Visual Code Studio is at number six. And I can't talk about the the performance of it, because I don't code, so I, I wouldn't know, but as an editor, it seems fine. And one of the main points is that people say, oh, it's available for Linux and Windows, of course, uh, it uses Electron, and is it available for FreeBSD? And it is. You know, the latest version, it's, from what I can tell, the performance is as good, uh, and it means that FreeBSD can be used as a development tool, a development platform, and so that's good. Like I say, I don't use this. I can't tell whether it works or not. Maybe you can tell me if you use it and leave a comment in the description box down below. But it seems very professional, seems very competent, and it's got all the features. It's got all the plugins, um, extensions, etc. that I think that you need. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what they do most of these. I'll tell you the truth. I honestly don't know. Let's have a look. Have a look at Lint. Um... If you code in C or C++, it probably helps you for that. You like say, you better tell me if uh, if you what you want is there. Uh, so if you make your code prettier, I think I need one to make the code more legible. But if you want the code being prettier, then there you go. So for all you uh, brain boxes out there, tell me if VS Code on FreeBSD is actually comparable to on Linux. Next, number seven, Callbird. Now this is a Twitter application. Uh, it sits on your desktop, it makes it a wonderful uh, addition to any desktop, I think. You could run it in your browser, of course, Twitter, but sometimes you just want a little, a little thing there that keeps you up to date with your latest uh, tweets. And you can see, it, as you scroll across, there's Gary though, hello Gary. And there's Deb, the wonderful FreeBSD head honcho. And there's FreeBSD Foundation. So yes, it's everything you want. Oh, wonderful uh, Sam Sheridan at Sheridan Computers. If you've got any computing needs, I recommend them, fellas. Absolutely brilliant. So yes, you can look at all the various aspects of your tweets and your mentions, etc. And your direct tweets, your direct messages. And there's the version number. So this is actually a wonderful little tool. Sometimes, yeah, you want you know if you don't want to fire up your browser just to check your latest messages, this will do the job. Eight OBS Studio. Now this is something which I'm going to start using a bit more. Uh, hello, look at that. Hello, there's me. Look, 
And I think I, I don't use it perhaps as much as I should. It's a very, very professional tool, as many, many people use OBS for their live streams, which I may do in the future, you don't know, and for video capture, etc. And I think that FreeBSD is often overlooked when it comes to a platform that you can perhaps uh, use as your streaming platform. I mean, you can do everything that Linux can. There's no difference at all. It's just that people perhaps don't think of FreeBSD as able to do it. Well, you can, and you get the latest version, just like you do the other applications. You know, and it's very extensible, lots of different plugins, and there's the version, look, 27.2.4. As of the time of this video, it's probably been updated since. And it can do everything you want. And like I say, I don't use this as much as I should. I'm going to look into perhaps using it more. Uh, you're going to perhaps see my ugly mug. Uh, installed into videos, uh, superimposed on a uh, wonderful screen, uh, a little bit more than I am. You have been warned. Number nine, Simple Screen Recorder. Now, Simple Screen Recorder is something which I use all the time. It's like Audacity, it's like Inkscape, it's like Caden Live. It's something which is extremely invaluable for me. It goes without saying it records your screen, you can choose different areas, of course. You can record V4 V4 L2 devices, which is like cameras, etc. Um, entire screens, sections, rectangles, follow the cursor. You name it, it can do it. And it gives really, really good quality video. Um, it's something which can aid presentations. You can make tutorials, which I, I do sometimes. Or you can just even, if your computer's fast enough, because it does take a little bit of a strain on the CPU, if your computer's fast enough and you've got the resources in there, you can record perhaps gameplay, etc. Although technically, I suppose, an external recording device um, would be better. It depends on your need. But if you want to quickly record a bit of screen and you don't mind perhaps a little bit of lag, then this is a fantastic program. And finally, although not least, is Thunderbird. Now, I don't use Thunderbird as my email client. I use Sylphid, which is, to me, is more lightweight and uh, efficient. But saying that, if you want a dress book, your tasks, your chat, everything related to perhaps your modern lifestyle or keeping things going, then Thunderbird is a very, very good choice. Second of all, like K-Mail or k uh, uh, office kind of sweet things that uh, you can get on using KDE, but Thunderbird has kind of gotten built into one little little round package, and it's brilliant. It's very, very configurable and extremely powerful. Now, like I say, I don't use this, but I know a lot of people do, and it's something which, like I say, you can, you can personalize your Thunderbird with uh, add-ons and plugins, extensions and themes. So, again, like Firefox is very extensible. I know they did, uh, they split from each other a good few years back now and they all went the separate paths, but there is a kind of like symbiosis there. So if you have Firefox and Thunderbird together, they still work together very well. So yeah, it's a very good tool. And I, you know, if you get a lot of blank entries in the menu there, it's simply because uh, it's not being configured to an account. Once you get an account up and going, you'll see the various options. But yeah, if you want a an email application, then Thunderbird uh, is a pretty good one, actually. I suppose you could use Geary as well, but Thunderbird is more independent. Geary is perhaps, I don't know, more a, a GNOME-based application, but if you don't want that, you don't want the overheads of GNOME, then Thunderbird is pretty cool. It's quite lightweight these days. It's not like the old days of Thunderbird where it was quite a bit bloated. It's an excellent tool and uh, something perhaps I should use. Right, that was top 10. Like I say, not in any particular order, not in any particular favoritism or anything like that. These are the ones which have been mentioned, people have asked about, it's the one I've noticed people covering. And so for 2022, these were the top 10 FreeBSD desktop applications which really you perhaps should have in your desktop and if this video probably was of some help for you maybe it was maybe you've forgotten about some of the applications which i mentioned if you find that then please consider giving it a like a thumbs up 
And if you want to watch further videos like this, which, you know, why wouldn't you? Although I can perhaps understand why you wouldn't. But if you do, then consider subscribing. It really helps the algorithms and helps me push the channel a bit further so I can cover more FreeBSD things in life. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. This and every other video on my channel has been made using FreeBSD and open source software.